Oh, follow that. <laughs> uh, I have, uh, in some ways, a similar story to tell. Certainly, the, the message I think that you will be getting from my presentation is very similar to what we've just heard from John and what a truly remarkable man John is. Um, but uh, my methods of conveying ideas and information and maybe this sort of underlying philosophy of both what I say both John and I stand for is the use of images. I spent 15 years not uh, walking the world but certainly traveling as a documentary filmmaker in many different parts of the world. So what I'm going to be doing is to show you some images that relate to the story of human impact on the world. And I go back not just uh, in my own beginning of my own sort of way of life about these matters, but uh, I go back 300 years to the start of the Industrial Revolution and what I'm about to say. So this is just a brief summary of what I'm going to be talking about the legacy of the fossil fuel dependence that arose out of the Industrial Revolution and cities and climate change. I focus particularly in my work on cities and sustainability because we do now live in an urbanizing world. So the question of how the, a match can be created between our urban lifestyle and the, what the planet can offer us on a sustainable basis is the sort of main theme of my work and has been for many years. And then after sort of showing you some, I have to say, rather depressing images of basically how our current impact on the planet is affecting the future of our own species of humanity, and then moving on to look at where we can go with this in terms of replacing the oil, replacing the coal, and the other fossil fuels uh, towards uh, a very different way of relating to the planet than we currently do. So, it is, so happens that this year, 2009, is actually exactly 300 years after the start of the Industrial Revolution, which started in Britain when, for the first time in history, humanity started in a major way to dig down into the Earth's crust, to dig up resources, and particularly at that time coal, and to, then to use that coal to produce steel and all the other materials and so on that has made modern lifestyles possible. So, great cities were created for the first time. Here's London. London as the first great city after Rome 2,000 years before, a city of over a million people in eight, about 1800, and then growing rapidly from that time to uh, becoming, uh, in the 1930s, uh, the world's largest city. And so that certainly was a fundamental change in the relationship between humans and nature, urbanization of this kind, large cities of this kind. And of course they have grown dramatically. There's another picture of London, which is the extraordinary concentration of energy use in these places. The cluster in the middle is the city of London, where the great crisis of world finance, together with what has been happening in Wall Street, first originated. But this is where the greatest amount of energy is actually spent in terms of uh, the uh, fossil fuel use that so defines modern life. Well, here's a picture of the United States. You know, all of this is dependent on burning oil and coal and gas, and absolutely extraordinary in which, a way in which we can now see this uh, planet changing from satellites uh, circling the planet and how that urban growth is then possible uh, as a result of these uses of fossil fuels. So just a few figures here looking at the actual processes of urban growth. Extraordinary figures, uh, four, time, four times increase in human numbers uh, throughout the 20th century, but the growth in urban populations being uh, nearly four times of that. And then uh, really extraordinary to think that by 2030 something like 60% of the world's population will be living in urban areas. But most importantly for my talk really is that cities which are clustered in very small surface areas ultimately when you look at the, look at the surface area of the planet use the bulk of the world's resources and that is becoming the great challenge of environmentalism. How to transform an urbanizing world and its energy uses, its resource uses uh, for the future because we are now stuck with these changes that have taken place both in human numbers terms but also in terms of the overall consumption patterns of humanity. Somehow 
we have to get that genie back in the box because the reality is that uh, the change has now taken place. We can't simply start uh, pretending that we do not have these enormous human numbers. But look at the extraordinary impacts. Look at the extraordinary impacts of extracting fossil fuel resources. We've heard from John about oil spills. Well, this is another uh, landscape resulting from the use of fossil fuels, what is called, some people have called, uh, the sacrifice zones of industrial uh, energy production. Massive removal of mountaintops here in the United States, but you can also see similar images from India, the extraordinary quantities of fossil fuels, particularly coal, of course, for power stations, making our current electricity consumption possible. And this, I think, is an extraordinary set of bullet points. Just the kind of areas that would have been required to replace the amount of energy that was started to be used uh, in 17, 1700 and now up to today if we had to use uh, uh, fuel wood instead. So today, if Britain uh, had to require, uh, supply its fossil fuel equivalent from forest areas, it would have to be a forest area ten times the size of the UK. Absolutely extraordinary. So if you extrapolate from that to Europe, to the United States, and now, of course, the ever-growing economies of, of Asia and India uh, included, that is certainly an extraordinary thing that we have to consider. Now, we are reaching a point where people have started to talk about we are close to peak oil. In other words, we are close to the point where uh, the uh, maximum production of oil in the world is no longer going to go up because it has to start that going down because simply we are burning fossil fuels at this extraordinary rate. So this is oil shells in Canada, basically uh, sand laced with oil that has to be boiled in order to extract the oil. So the net energy that comes out of this is much less than from digging up or pumping up oil from somewhere in the crust of uh, the uh, deserts of uh, Arabia or somewhere like that. And look at the technologies that are now required to extract oil from deep within the sea, then of course leading in part to the kind of oil spill spills we have heard about from, from John. Huge infrastructure needed to pipe uh, oil across the world. And then of course resource wars. We've had several resource wars already since the Second World War, the Iraq War being the last one, and certainly when you listen to Dick Cheney and uh, others, uh, top leaders in the United States, it's absolutely clear that war was about oil and is continuing to be about oil. Secure supplies of oil from a place that has been subdued uh, to a place that is dominant, in other words, the United States or Europe. So just a few points here summarizing the resources that are necessary for one living. Every year uh, we are using resources from the planet in excess to something like 30% more than is actually the, able, the, the Earth is able to supply us on a sustainable basis. That's actually extraordinary. These are forest products, the, this uh, timber, this is uh, agricultural products. Every year we are exploiting the planet to a much greater extent than it can offer us on a sustainable basis. But even more uh, worrying in a sense is that every year we burn at least one million years worth of fossil fuels. It took about 300 million years for those to accumulate in the Earth's crust. We're burning them in about 300 years. Absolutely extraordinary figure. Making all this urbanization, uh, uh, all these uh, industrial lifestyles, all this transportation possible for the first time. And then if everybody lived like a Londoner, we would need three planets. If everybody lived like a New Yorker, we would need five planets. It's not that easy to make new planets, I don't think. So let's be clear that we better live off the one that we can actually uh, see and that we walk across and that we uh, experience every day. Let us make peace with nature. But urbanization of this scale, which is a picture of San Paolo, would have not been possible without this extraordinary extraction of fossil fuels for the transport systems, electricity supply, all the rest of it, food supply from elsewhere, and so on. And then you see extraordinary images like this, which is Dubai. Now, what a crazy place, you could say, all dependent on enormous inputs of